Now I actually had a stay hanger that I could really utilize. Okay. Neutral, neutral, neutral. Luckily, Roger has a pretty cheap ego. Favored, favored. Dominating. Oh, right. This one also is going to be where they're going to get. Whoever does it is also going to get hit. So let's do you two, because that. More health, more health before stagger. On both of you. Shrek, though. Do this one. Actually, no. Let's do a cheaper one. And struggle, struggle. I don't think that would be too bad. Feels early to be using a lot of my egos, but at the same time, I think this is gonna be one of the rougher fights. And then Ahab, probably the final big fight. Ow. Okay. Charling, Sawyer. Dominating. Do that. Neutral dominating. Ooh, panic! Panic is actually good for me. All of you strong, but no sailors. Excuse? I have two. 
There's Ishii and Otis. Both of them have sailed. <laughs> Why talk so slow? Irritating. <laughs> If you're not abbreviating, abbreviating with acronyms, then all you're doing is wasting time. Oh yeah, Ryoshi who doesn't like to talk would probably be annoyed by people talking more slowly. Really. Using abbreviations. It's easier. Ishmael's mace nicked the harpooner's mesh. She came dangerously close to smashing their skull. Should have gotten out of my way when I gave you the chance. Now I'm going to have your back ash your face in. But you, you are a sailor. Right. We both are. Quick, quick. In a sudden explosive burst of emotion, Ishmael bolted forth like a cannonball to her quickly before holding her in a tight embrace. Oh. Why was she saying something about bashing her face in just a moment ago? This embrace is what one does when meeting an old fellow. You fear they may flutter away unless you hold them so tightly so. Your hair color can't forget. Your name, I know. But no attacking captain. What? I'm just... You attack captain again, I attack you. Then kill or be killed, one of us. No, no. Whatever shall you do, Starbuck here has, out of kind, out of the kindness of his heart, rescued you from the jaws of death, invited you to my village. Yet you elected to attack me as if to spit on that very kindness. Were we sailing the Great Lake, I would have had you all, all tied and thrown overboard to be crushed underneath the keel of our ship. Your lungs bloating with the lake's waters. There were at least 40 people living in Pequot Town, and that was a conservative estimate. From their vicious glares, I could tell that every single one of them was a fiercely loyal follower of Ahab. Here we were in this unfamiliar environment, trapped and lost. Things aren't looking so good. And a single word from Ahab, and they'd all be upon us. If we were to retreat behind us is a river of stomach acid, and ahead of us is unknown territory. <laughs> Lads and lesson, cast fear from your hearts. It is lucky for you that I am nothing if not merciful. I shall forgive your transgressions thus far. Ahab is so not merciful. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're full of shit. <laughs> I don't believe it. Great, it, yeah. But I can hardly believe that someone so obsessed with hunting a white whale would have mercy in their heart when the whale nearly killed them and stole their leg. And that was enough of a, like, fixating point to hunt the white whale. Great, I also get it's white, it's rare, it's like this other, like, out-of-the-box thing. It's not like a regular whale, you know, partly because of its color, but still. A lot of that obsession comes a little bit with a vendetta. I have questions I would like to ask you, and I'm certain that you have a few for me as well. 
If you're willing to talk, then enter the captain's quarters. In peace, mind. Ahab casually turned around and marched into one of the buildings. She carried herself off with the utmost confidence. It was almost like she knew that we would follow. That we had no choice but to follow. Oi, them blokes that were glaring at us, they're gone. Like nothing happened. Captain forgave, then everyone else forgives. I forgive too. Hmm. To turn her back on someone who was charging at her with murderous intent just moments ago, it's... Yes, she is confident. Confident that she's got the numerical advantage, even if we were to press the offense. Confident that we know there's more of us to lose by attacking her than by going along with her. With what just happened, she's made it clear that her day that at least while we're in here, she has the absolute control of the situation. Talk with her. In peace? Nonsense. It's not like we have a way out of here. Ishmael gaze followed Kwikwi, who walked wordlessly behind the captain. Let's go. Let's listen to what that bastard's got to say. There's nowhere to run, after all. For her, or for us. When winning a clash using Gloom Affinity Skill, one ally with the lowest SP heals 5 SP. Oh, yes, thank you, thank you. Cause you know who's probably got the lowest SP? It's gonna be fucking Ishmael! <laughs> Can I get a heal checkpoint spot, please? Uh, so what's that on the board over there? The number of gold coins assigned to each crew, man, and woman. We collect them by fishing up useful stuff, or by hunting mermaids. And who's the one paying you? The captain, obviously. Are you saying that there is economic activity within the whale's stomach? What's needed gold coins could you have here, let alone the means of procuring them? Told ya. We'll be out of here in just a little bit. And once we're off this whale, I'll get paid 63 gold coins. With that much dough, I might just be able to snag myself a halfway decent ship. Unless the inflation's gone nuts, that is. Oh, by the way, ever been to Marlin Port Ship lately? Any chance you saw the Sting Ray Flat Top Grill Place? I wonder if it's still open. Oh, that sounds delish. Where is it? Looks like Ahab's giving out gold coins f to her crew Ooh, for their labor. The promise of a reward for services rendered, and I'm sure that's a strong motivator. Uh, hey, Ishmael, you really caught me off guard earlier. Seriously, I didn't think I'd find you here of all places. When we're out here, when we're out of here, we should go crash at a bar and drink rum straight from a bar barrel. 
We'll make it a competition, just like the good old days. Right, so did you get a chance to say hello to everyone? A little chat. Oh. Man, you sure did grow your hair out. Whatever happened to long hair is annoying. That's a lot of questions at once. I don't think any of them want to chat with me. I can tell from the looks that they're giving me. Sometimes people from other ships would join us in the village. But none of them lasted more than a day. We're the only ones who's made it this long. Hmm. It's all thanks to a solution Captain came up with. Solution. A way to stop our bodies and minds from turning pallid. What is it? As you can see, without our captain, we would have long been turned into mermaids. Without the captain, this village wouldn't exist. So anyone that dares antagonize the captain is our enemy. Because the stand against the captain is the stand against our very survival. Okay, that makes sense as to why they're all, like, on board with keeping Ahab alive, for one. Or the very least, give a lot of trust to Ahab. There is a level in the book where, and I think Ishmael even mentions it in the story, where it feels like um, almost brainwashing, which I'm wondering if might still also be a bit of the case with this keeping them from going pallid in a way of making it seem like she is 100% necessary to it, but essentially her goal of the white whale becomes their goal of the white whale. So. And I'm wondering like Sir Cirk is talking about getting out and getting 63 gold coins is there even an L? Or is that also a farce? It seems like that thing can free flow, free move through liquid. You've changed, Starbuck. I remember you butting heads with the captain all the time. Did I? Don't forget who trapped all of you here in the first place. Led us to our deaths. Ishmael coldly walks past Starbuck before entering the office. I thought he was an old mate of yours. Starbuck, first mate of the Pequod. He wanted to be a good person to everyone, and he was the closest of the crew to the captain's ear. Which meant that they also squabbled pretty often, but it didn't matter in the end. Ahab was equally indifferent to everyone anyway. Please excuse the state of my office. A bottle of rum and this would have gone down much smoother, yet after all the time we've spent stuck here, I've not seen a single bottle of it float its way in. Second the manager, allow me to take charge in this negotiation. Ishmael cannot be trusted to make rational decision. 
and you, executive manager, cannot properly communicate with this woman. She will only hear your ticking sounds. Why is the music getting ramped up as if we're going into a fight? I thought we were having a conversation! <laughs> Sure. Captain Ahab, is it? We... Allow me a hazard to guess. Rude in here, voluntarily in search of something that the pallid whale devoured. This means that you and your present company have also found a way to keep yourselves from turning into mermaids. Well, I don't suppose there is any point in hiding it when we've already come this far. We are in search of a certain object. Its appearance is as thus. Don Quixote started explaining, looking around excitedly as though she had expected the captain to suddenly produce a golden ball from her pockets. Wait, are we really going to just tell her everything? Why don't we talk about this between us first and... I know what you see. A golden stick of sorts, I presume. Am I wrong? What? What? We couldn't even deny her accusations, thanks to Gregor's external, extremely telling reaction. I know where to find it. I can even bring you to it. Hmm, how did we even know you aren't bluffing? Yeah, but... What if you just overheard while we were talking? I shall prove it to you then. From that branch emanates a very far-reaching golden light. Its glow is warm and bright, yet not bright enough to be blinding. It appears that she at least knows of the golden bow. What she has just told us is more than we're un... More than what unrelated individuals shouldn't be able to know. Still, I don't believe she's really about to tell us where the bow is. Do you presume that I would not part with this information? I have nothing to hide. Ahab slammed the desk and leaned aggressively towards us. She wore a knowing grin as though she knew exactly what we wanted and what we were about to say to get it. Let us speak plainly here. I have not to hide from you. In fact, I dare say it is that you who are withholding things from me. You called the stick the golden ball, did you? Well, that golden ball, ball is at dead center of this accursed whale. At the dead center? The epicenter of this deep, resonating thumping. The spring of life that fuels this beast. The heart. The heart that seeks with all that is evil in the world. But you are in luck. It just so happens to be that the Pequod has set course for the very same destination, and we plan to set sail in the very near future. Because the only way out of the whale is by destroying its heart. That's interesting. I wonder if it's this is just a coincidence. What's so interesting about it? Isn't it interesting that after all those years they spent preparing for their journey to the heart, we just happened to arrive as they were about to set sail? I have not else to say but merely refer to the nature of fate. The threads of fate itself is weaved so that I, Ahab, shall be the one to pierce the heart of the pallid whale. I have set more sails in this belly of the beast than a number of your gritted teeth combined. I have been to every nook and cranny of this place, all of which I clearly recall. There is no method upon this earth that I have not attempted to pierce this beast high. So allow me to prelude a few options for you. This beast hides as thick and thick and as penetrable as our corpse fortress. All the weapons in the world will not be able to pierce it. Try to stab it with my harpoon. Wound it, yes. Puncture a hole, no. Well, if you find my words so difficult to believe, then feel free to give it a try with your own weapons. My attempts hardly left a mark. If she's right, then it won't matter what the Indigo Elder does. 
No matter what the LCA does, no matter how hard they'll try, they can't get us out of here. I... we know better than anyone. The crushing pain of surviving at a place is such as this, with no hope of rescue. No sane mind survives such torment for long. Behold, my pitiful crew. They hold up, hold on tooth and nail to their sense of self as the pallid membrane tries to devour them whole. Nothing here. Nothing. None. We can do naught here but scaven in the foesome that washes up to the stomach. Mermaid court herbs its quick wig brings back, back from our hunts to our only source of substance. Fins soft how the heck do you guys even survive here face the faith that as long as we follow our captain should eventually lead us out of here that's the hope we hold on to that is like the opposite of Ishmael, because Ishmael's faith has been her eventual ability to stab Ahab to death. Ah, <laughs> uh, now give my offer a listen. I, Captain Ahab of the Pequod, the leader of Pequod Town, have a responsibility to bring every single one of my crew home. Thus I make this offer to you. I will destroy this bastard's heart. For long I have prepared now, all that remains to be done is to set the plan in motion. Our goals are the same, yet we each seek different treasures. Assist me in my plan, we will hunt this whale and escape, and the golden bow shall be yours. We must discuss this amongst ourselves first. Take as much time as you want. Ahab nodded with a generous smile. Well, we huddled in one corner of our office to discuss this. The boat that carried us here is beyond salvaging. Thus, it follows that we require a new boat for us to escape the whale. Moreover, moving across the bodily fluids of this whale is necessary if we are to con conduct an investigation of its interiors. For that, we require a new boat. Hmm. And commandeering their vessel is also one of our options. Guys, they can hear us pipe down. <laughs> Our ship, hard to sail. Complex. Only Pequot crew can handle Pequot boats. What'd I say? How much time would it take if we were to build a boat from scratch? Considering that we possess no necessary materials, considering that we must reinforce it to be resistant of the whale's acid, estimate time of completion is... No, no, let's not even think about that. Let's not. Ah, so that's your offer. I could smell your bullshit coming from a mile away. She's not changed one bit, driving people to their deaths with some bullshit that at a glance seems plausible. Nothing's changed. Yeah, there's something off about her. Maybe we just do this ourselves? Right, never trust something that requires too much to explain. I think they spent a long time building a plan to destroy the heart and escape this place. Can we really do it on our own from scratch? I also don't know how long we could hold out in here. Yeah, that captain probably knows this place better than anyone. So our other options are either turning into mermaids and killing each other, or remain trapped in here forever. Are they really the only alternatives we've got? The rig gay shall not abandon us! Dawn. <laughs> We're having trouble coming to an agreement. I will mediate. Let's battle to the last person standing and have them decide. Ryosha, that's not... <laughs> the sinners were all expressing their opinions, which were all very diametrically opposed to one another, with little hope of meeting somewhere in the middle. And I 
was unnerved by how easily Ahab managed to see right through us. I see that you're having some trouble coming to an agreement amongst yourselves. That is quite understandable. It should be clear as day that the answer is right before your eyes. My offer is perfect for your, your present, rather desperate situation. But that is the whims of fate. These seemingly implausible coincidental opportunities are the threads of fate weaving the path for ahead of us. You must first learn to be someone who grips their destiny when it presents itself. It is common among wisdom amongst every seafarer. Uh, Sinclair shuddered a little. A lot has happened. Various moments of past coincidences must have passed before every sinner's eyes. When we were all almost sandwiched between two ships, when we encountered those floating mermaids on a deserted ship, when we fought a whale and its byproducts that came from the waves, you and your arrogant, all-knowing speeches haven't changed one bit. Don't delude yourself. I'm not joining hands with you ever again. Even now, I can't wait to chew you up and tear you apart. <laughs> what face? What words? The girl has finally learned how to speak like a proper sea dog worth her salt, haven't you, Ishmael? Didn't think you'd remember my name. How could I not? I heard your voice moments before the whale swallowed me whole. The echoes of your voice calling my name, scattering to the wind in the midst of desolation. Huh, I can hear it clearly as though it happened but a day ago. But we saw the flashback. Ishmael was shouting for Queequeg. Even for a brief moment, through the tempest our eyes met and I peered into the depths of your heart. Into the depths of your true desire. Ahab strode toward Ishmael. Ishmael stood her ground. She glared at the old woman with bloodshot eyes. So I'll give you what you want. Her voice was low, yet personal. Honest. Uh, let's see what kind of crap you come up with this time. Because what I want is my heart. Ishmael, listen well. I am the first and the only person who wants the birth of your life's greatest wish. There was an awakening deep within you, a hateful obsession, screaming and thrashing with frenzy so that you may one day gut me yourself. Oh, Ahab knows Ishmael well because Ishmael's obsession basically mirrors Ahab's obsession with the pallid whale. <laughs> that very desire is what has brought you before me. Past the trials and tribulations the world has thrown on in your way, am I wrong? The golden bowl they seek, you don't give a shit about that. Of course you don't. My very heart is your golden bow, your plunder, the treasure you so desperately seek at the end of your journey. I knew that. Deep inside, you were still a sailor and a harponeer. An excellent one at that. From the moment of our reunion to now, you've been stabbing me over and over again in your head. And not once have you averted your eyes. And what a harponeer -er that makes you. Were I a whale, I would have willingly given you my heart to kill. You'll give me your heart? You know better than anyone that I do not lie, Ishmael. You know where the bow of my accumulated passion has set course to. Help me destroy this whale's heart. And I, Captain Ahab, shall willingly give you my life. It matters not the manner in which you end me. I will accept it all gladly. <laughs> Ahab snatched Ishmael's harpoon and brings it close to her throat. Now, 
Do you not wish to tear open my arteries? Allow me to make this task even easier for you. I shall turn my neck so that my veins are plain to see. All of this is yours. As long as you, I can achieve my goal. Oh, what a keen harpoon you have wetted. I can imagine the nights you spent sharpening it, drawing a picture of my painful demise. You must have felt it. The call of destiny, your fate, just as I have. None on this earth understands you better than I do, Ishmael. I know that very longing, that very burning hatred that it consumes your days. Yeah, you're right. I'm barely holding myself back from tearing into your arteries. Yet you do not act. Because even now, even as the tip of your razor har sharp harpoon tickles the fuzz of my neck, you know the truth so well. But you are still too weak to kill me. How pitiful, yet how clever the girl knows her place. And that cleverness serves you well. A foolish sailor would not have accepted this very generous offer of mine. As long as I can kill the pallid whale with my own eye two hands, I care not what happens next. My heart is yours to harpoon, Ishmael. I will be made complete at the very moment. What happens afterward, I could not care less. Ishmael laughed and laughed. She did not fight back with her biting tongue, nor did she sharply and rationally criticize the captain's words as she did ours. She laughed and laughed and laughed, glaring straight into Ahab's eyes. Yes! I like the look in your eyes. I can already see it. In fact, I may as well have already heard your decision from that look. Yeah. Enjoy your last voyage, Ahab. And whatever it takes, survive to the end of this voyage until you destroy the whale's heart. And I'll happily destroy you in the moment you are made complete. I'm actually kind of surprised Ishmael is taking this deal. Granted, it's kind of... It's in the realm of necessary of, hey, we need the ship, we need not everyone. But I can also see a even better, like, vengeance thing to happen. Is in the moment before Ahab stabs the heart herself, Ishmael goes for the stab. <laughs> Stealing the kill from Ahab... To also, like, I'll say that feels like much greater revenge than even killing Ahab herself of taking away the goal that Ahab has worked so long for and obsessed over of, oh, you're almost going to get it. I'm going to take that from you, which would be so cool if that happens. Cause fuck you, cause this is all about HBL's hatred of Ahab right now, so it's like, okay, what's the one thing you could do that's even worse, potentially, than killing Ahab? Stealing the kill of the pallid whale in front of Ahab. <gasps> Yes! Now I see the eyes of a proper sea dog. Finally, conviction burns within your eyes. I shall not... Ah, uh, disappoint, Ishmael. Allow my heart to beat like the very tempest. Allow my heart to bleed hotter than the boiling blood of the lava whale. So I may be a target worthy of your harpoon. A sense of overwhelming dread emanated from the pair's mad laughter. Neither I nor the other sinners dared to intrude. Their laughs were very much alike. To the point where I wasn't sure which belonged to Ishmael and which belonged to Ahab. What I was thinking then, I'm not really sure. It wasn't like when we had any other choice. It wasn't like we had any other choice, but... 
Maybe I was hoping that Ishmael would refuse the offer. So you're joining us for the journey to the heart? Ain't that nice? It's encouraging to have you lively looking fellows along for the ride. Not a hint of that pale membrane to be seen on use. Oh, speaking of which, how are y'all so... How are you all so okay? How come the pellet whales got no effect on any of you? Curious Starbuck asked. Forsooth, that is... It's a long story. We just happened to get lucky and I'll leave it at that. Gregor cut in and blocked Don Quixote's mouth. It looks like a descent. Third castle must be completed if we are to reach the heart. Two ships, two routes. They must go their separate ways to reach the heart. The Pequod will make its way through the pancreas. Question. Shoot. Why are you the ones going through the pancreas? Well, the pancreas is vast and filled with treacherous acid. To go in there without knowing when and where the acid will spew, who from it is to dance with death. So I'm electing to bring those that have toiled here for years, not the inexperienced landsmen such as you. Starbuck shrugged next to the captain. I must also mention that the pancreas is heavily populated by mermaids. It is better that we sailors who have spent our entire lives hunting mermaids and whales take that route instead. While there are any particular powerful or troublesome mermaids there, our numerical adventures will still be useful in that path. At the end of its pancreas, we will hew open its largest vein. Then, its left heart atrium will open to supply blood to the area. Okay, so what about us? You will take this path. The right heart atrium connected to the lungs. That is, this is a narrow path, so smaller vessels will serve you well. Some other things have made their way into the path that I send you on. They are neither whale nor mermaid. Their numbers are small, but each of them may pose a difficult fight. Possibly some abnormalities that got taken from the Limbus branch? When you lack in numbers, I assume will be made it up by your individual prowess. You and your men will shine in targeted strikes. Not all out of battles that the Pequod will face through the pancreas. Were you not here, I would have had to send Starbuck, Queequeg, and at least eight or other good men that way. A boat divided will have a higher chance of failing. In fact, it had been a rather significant concern of mine. But you have arrived, fitted in perfectly into a conundrum of a puzzle as though fate itself has ordained it. Destiny is one fickle thing, is it not? This Ahab must be referring to the abnormalities that were swallowed alongside the lobotomy court branch. So you know something about, about those odd creatures. Indeed, our encounter was ordained by fate. The very destiny that leads me to the heart of the whale. Kill the monster there. You open the arteries and, right, and the right atrium shall open. And we will meet at the heart where the atriums meet. Then I shall enter and destroy its core, the heart of the heart, if you will. Verily, you proclaim that there is a heart within a heart. I see that you have a little experience contending a foe so great as the whale. It is obvious that such a colossal creature would have a heart that fuels its heart. Is that supposed to be obvious? The sun shall shine on us again only when we destroy the heart beating with the very essence of the evil. Through the whale sundering the flesh shall the gentle light reign over us. 
and you will impale me with the final harpoon to end my breath once and for all. Well, I'm yet to analyze the geography of this entity. The general structure of the plan appears sound to me, Executive Manager. Yeah, I agree. Looks like Ahab wasn't kidding about checking every nook and cranny of the belly of the whale. She did all that with a singular desire to hunt and kill the great whale once and for all. And for such a long time... I still don't like this. And we're supposed to just, what, listen to some old dodgy captain's ordering us around? I thought the clockhead here was our boss. Why don't we just finish this with our own hands instead of relying on her? Let's just do this ourselves. Let one or two of us go mad and turn into a mermaid. At least it wouldn't have been in our work at... At least it would have been our work at the end of the day. <laughs> Almost a responsible suggestion. I would have been and the first to suggest that had I not estimated our losses to be higher than one or two of us. So why didn't you? We were here at a significant disadvantage when it comes to information on this battlefield. The executive manager's life may be at risk at any moment. Not even a witless rookie's risk or gamble with the lives of their superiors. And all for that, and all that for your pride. What foolishness. As long as we destroy the heart, I can enter. As long as we destroy the heart. She grits her teeth as she repeats it to herself like a ma like a mantra. So that she may never forget, not even for a moment. Right then. We will meet again at our rendezvous point. Let this be a good voyage to us all. Voyage. Not voyage. I was thinking Bon Voyage for the name of the chapter. The sunlight is within our grass, my dearest crew. We will soon breathe deep the mechanical traitorous stench of the city's air. Ahab provided us with a boat that could bring us all the way to the heart. Only Pequod crew steers Pequod boat, so I steer. Weequay joined us as our helmsman, helmswoman. Queequeg wasn't lying. This boat wasn't like the other boat we'd seen. We'd ever seen. His body was made of flesh and bones. I also noted a few pieces of metal plates were visible between the organic materials. Only a crew of the Pequod could possibly know how to steer this boat near this bizarre ship. Okay. 